In this video, we're going to teach you the secrets behind playing a jump smash and give you tips on how you can play this successfully in a match. Hello and welcome back to Bampton Insight. If you're new here, we're Greg and Jenny, two professional players releasing a new video every Sunday on all things badminton. Now last week we actually released a step-by-step -step tutorial on the smash and how to maximise your power, so we'd highly recommend going to watch that one as well as this video. And in this video, we're going to focus on the one shot that everyone wants to be able to do, the jump smash. There are two main benefits to using a jump smash. Firstly, you're going to have a higher contact point and create more angle on the shot. And secondly, when you jump, you look more threatening and you can almost scare your opponents to move back in their defensive position. So when choosing to play this shot, you need to have time to get behind the shuttle and then perform this jump. There's no point doing a two-footed jump smash if you're not in the right position or if you don't have enough time to jump as you won't be able to create any angle on the shuttle or time it well. If you're not in a position to get behind the shuttle in time, maybe you've started slightly out of position or the lift is too flat, then we'd recommend doing a jump out smash or scissor kick. And if you're unsure on the scissor kick movement, we've done a complete tutorial on this, which we'll include a link to in the description below if you want to check it out after this. So for the movement, you want to start by facing sideways with your feet around shoulder width apart. As you can see Go doing here, he goes down into a squat to load the legs to be able to jump as high as possible. So as you push off from the ground, you want to open out your chest, pull your racket arm back into this 90 degree position like this with your elbow back as much as you can and then your non-racket arm should point up like this to help with your timing, balance and your rotation. As the shuttle then starts to travel down you begin your rotation. The timing of this of course depends on the height of the lift and how high you can jump. We broke down the whole technique of the smash in our previous video but the basic principles are that you want to use your hips, torso and shoulder to rotate in a sequence slightly after one another to generate the energy for your arm and wrist to come through to create that maximum racket head speed. And this racket head speed directly correlates to the speed of your smash. But you don't want to clearly separate these movements like a robot. <laughs> it has to be a fluid motion to create speed in this rotation. So once you've jumped, your legs should come up to allow the hips to rotate and then the torso comes through after. Like you can see here, it's only once this rotation slows down and the hips are almost square to the net that the shoulders and elbow come through. Make sure that you keep your chest open like this right until the last second. And this is again so you can generate more force through the shuttle upon the point of contact. Again, we mentioned this on last week's video, as well as the importance of the internal rotation of the shoulder to create a clean hit on the shuttle without slicing it. This is what some people think forearm rotation does, but this internal rotation allows maximum force to go through the shuttle, therefore helping you to generate more power. And when we say hold back until the last second, it's more like milliseconds. And a study at Loughborough University showed that the most powerful smashers started increasing their racket head speed later but reached a higher racket speed overall and therefore had a more powerful smash. It's also really important to have a loose grip until the point of contact and a contact point about half a metre in front of you. So remember to make sure you jump slightly forwards into the shuttle as this forwards momentum also creates power in the shot. And lastly, although you're reaching up to create a good angle and create this power, you don't want to completely straighten your arm before contact. And we always say it's like a golf swing, both with the rotation, but also timing. If you tense up and try and hit it as hard as you can, you'll probably mistime it and it won't go anywhere. Being relaxed helps so much. As we've said, it's about that fluid motion and creating maximal racket head speed, which are both really difficult to do if you're very tense. And one final technical point to note is this rebound action that we see a lot of the top players doing. As soon as Higashino has struck the shuttle, her racket quickly rebounds to be ready for the next shot. This rebound is actually really important as it can prevent you from over-rotating and therefore being off balance when you land. So now you know how to jump smash, but where should you place the smash? 
Well, we're going to finish by discussing this as a lot of you asked about it after last week's smash power video. Obviously, you ideally want to hit the jump smash onto the floor. But as we said at the start of the video, you don't want to hit hard out of position, especially in doubles. You can in singles, but only if it's a winner or really effective shot. In singles, you want to place a smash down the sidelines or often the body smash can be really effective. But this is perfect placement from Axis. And, and when doing this, try and tuck your opponent up in their right hip if they're right-handed, so around here, and their left hip if they're left-handed, so around here. This is because it's a really awkward area to get, and they also don't know whether to play a forehand or a backhand. You should also aim to this area in doubles for the same reasons. And smashing down the middle is also a good shot as it can create confusion and indecision. Two smashes that are often effective are down the straight tram line or fully cross court. These shots can sometimes catch your opponents off guard if they're expecting the smash to the middle. Oh, and if you play mixed, you probably want to smash at the woman most of the time. Greg, you can't say that. I'm not putting that in the video. Why not? They're weaker, aren't they? Well, I don't know. Sometimes the woman's defence is better than the man's. Like mine and yours. What? But yeah, I think we'll end that debate there. But if you're unsure on how to change your technique, depending on if you're hitting it straight or cross, or steep or flat, then it's simply the contact point of the shuttle on your strings and the angle of your racket face. And it also helps if your momentum is going in that direction too. So adjust accordingly when you know where your smash is going to. Yeah, so let's recap. You need to get in a good position, jump up and slightly forwards with an open chest. You then rotate your hips, then torso, and then your shoulder and elbow come through. You need to have a quick acceleration of the racket through the shuttle with a loose grip right until the point of contact and an open racket face, ideally timing the shuttle as well as the pros do. But as we said throughout, don't feel like you always have to use the jump smash as it's not always the right shot choice. It might mean you play a bad shot or you're just out of position afterwards as a result. And it's also been proven that the height of your jump smash doesn't correlate with the smash speed. But yeah, just thought we'd mention that. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please jump up and smash that subscribe button, give the video a like, and we'll see you on another video.